the leadership program at Birchwood School gives you an opportunity to learn leadership skills, skills and leadership. Being a leader doesn't mean you're a boss. It doesn't mean you get to order people around. It doesn't mean you're a big shot. All right, eighth graders, I read a little turtle to you yesterday. Seventh, I'm going to read it to you today. He thought he was a big shot. He wanted to be the highest uh, turtle in the land, and he climbed on all the other turtles' backs. How many turtles did he climb on? Uh, 5,607. Yeah. Because <laughs> he wanted to be a big shot. No, that's not the idea of being a leader. And we're more a friend, a helper. We're more like a lamb that's at the head of a flock, taking care of uh, a gentle, in a gentle way. Um, leadership is actually a very big idea. There's a lot to understand in the concept of leadership. You know, we have leaders in government, we have leaders in business, leaders in schools, leaders in technology, leaders in the arts, leaders in a family, right? And um, there's, there's something to leadership. I'm going to give you a couple quotes. And they all were given to us by some of the eighth graders for our leadership program. You've probably all noticed that bulletin board going up the stairs in that wing. Underneath Abraham Lincoln, there's a sign that says Leadership at Birchwood. And under that sign, seventh and eighth graders from last year all found quotes on leadership that depict what leadership is all about. And I'm going to read you a few of those. Those of you who are eighth grade, you, yours are still up there, and you have a chance to change it or keep the same one. But some things about leadership, I'll just give you a few quotes. This one's by John Quincy Adams, who was a uh, president. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. And you're going to make mistakes. Is there anything bad about that? A man's errors are the portals of discovery. James Joyce, very famous writer in America. A man's errors are his portals of discovery. Along those lines, I have no regrets in my life. I think that everything happens to you for a reason. The hard times that you go through build character making you a much stronger person. So that goes for all the new skills you're learning as a leader. And that uh, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, you've all done poems by him, right? In poetry show. It takes less time to do a thing right than it does to explain why you did it wrong. Okay, so one of the traits we're going to have is to learn how to do something when you're doing a job that helps the school, you want to put your mind on it to uh, figure out what would be a good way to do it. And it takes thinking, it takes brainstorming, it takes problem solving, and we're going to give you each rounds of responsibility in the school so that you can apply all these traits of a leader. Okay, so now I'll tell you a little bit about the leadership program principles that we put in place at Birchwood. Of course, in your homerooms, you are studying the characteristics and accomplishments of great people. And you've been doing that all through in opening, but especially with Ms. Tsang and in eighth grade with Mr. Devilek, you are really studying um, um, great leaders. And in the eighth grade with Mr. Devilek, you're also learning about the four cardinal virtues. Have you learned what they are yet? Uh, the, I think he started talking about justice, but it's also self-control, courage, and wisdom. So a big one that you'll be focusing on is self-control. Um, and I'm going to be reading to the 8th graders about George Washington, and you think, oh, what a great leader, and his <coughs> character must have been courage. Well, it was. 
but he first learned how to control his own impulses um, when he was younger. He, he couldn't just get angry when he wanted to, right? And he couldn't just talk back to somebody when he wanted to. He really had to exercise self-control so that when people looked at him, he, could, he was respected for a person who commanded respect. So that's the big picture. You'll be continually be inspired by great people. But then in the time that you have here with me, two days a week, we are going to give you some training in all of this. Responsibility is learned through real opportunities to bear it. We can't just preach at you all the time. You've got to be responsible. We've got to give you opportunities to bear responsibility, to feel like everything's hinging on what this job I'm doing. So we carve out realms of responsibility for you for which help is genuinely needed. Things the school really needs you to do. People who really appreciate your help. Some examples are librarians, office helpers, aides in younger classrooms, indoor recess helpers, managers of the hallway bulletin boards and the school store, and helping in opening our box tops program, our recycling program, computer maintenance, lost and found, copying for teachers. We might think of more. Next time we meet, I'm going to show you the list of jobs on the, on the smart board, and you might think of more, and we'll be able to sign up for one of these. We know that at this age, this matches. You have a desire to lead. It's just wonderful for me to have seen this year after year after year, to see students at your age, 7th and 8th grade, just rise to it and do it with such capability that if, you know, if given the chance, you know how to do it. And you have good ideas, and you, you, you can bear the responsibility. So giving you this sort of matches what research says about this stage in your life, and it's, for me it's such a pleasure to see how you rise to it. And then, you know, we build school pride, and you build self-esteem, and it's, it's, you know, a leadership training program is just really cool at your age. So, but there's a tension between freedom and responsibility. So the idea is, we can give you ever greater amounts of responsibility as you learn to handle freedom. So, you know, when children are little, they have to learn to be responsible for themselves and to take care of their own desk and their own trapper and their own locker, right? But little by little, you learn, oh, I can also take care of class jobs. I can have greater responsibilities in my family. And we can begin, you've begun to, to help outside the class, um, school-wide. And then, um, pretty soon, we're able to let you go out of the teacher's sight, just go around the school freely, because <coughs> Your response, you've built up that responsibility that we can just trust you. And we know that we, you know, you can handle the freedom. All right? So there's a principle there. But sometimes, you know, you're just at that stage here between childhood and adult. It's called adolescence. And so you're learning. And we just want you to feel free to learn. That's why I had a couple quotes about making mistakes. You're going to goof up. You're going to forget, oh yeah, I'm not supposed to be running up the steps. Because that's what we're trying to help the younger students not do, but I forgot. Right? And I'm not supposed to be um, having fun in the corner when I'm supposed to be doing my job with each other because it's so much fun. Of course, it's relaxed, and you know, I'm not saying you're not gonna, you're not gonna chat, you're not gonna laugh, but you're not also you're gonna control yourself so you don't get carried away, because I'm not gonna be in the room where you are all the time. Okay, but if you goof up and you continually make those mistakes, then the idea is we just pull back the freedom a little bit, 
while you learn again the responsibility and the self-control, and then once we feel, okay, we got it, then we can let go again. So there's a real um, dynamic between freedom and responsibility, but you get to practice. The opportunities we give you are varied according to different types of leadership activities, because we're not all the same type of student, right? Um, some of you will shine when you're asked to head up something. Um, and others of you are a little more shy and you prefer not to be the head of a, of, of, of a task or a group. But you really shine when you can organize it. You know, you, 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 you might be really good at organizing or somebody else just in coming up with ideas. So, a leader doesn't always mean a person up front being the one doing all the talking, right? But you've got a realm of responsibility and you understand how to um, carry that out, whatever kind of um, um, personality traits you apply to it. Yeah. Then, you know what also goes along with responsibility and self-control is compassion. That's a trait that goes along with it because in the end, what we're doing is a service to other people, right? In the end, you're either being very helpful to Mrs. Waldo if you're helping her with the computer technology. Or, in the end, you're helping Mrs. Bixler in the office. Or, you're helping the school raise money when you take care of the box tops program, right? Which gets us more recess equipment. Or, you're helping a young child pack up at the end of the day. If everything you're doing, the purpose of it is to give back to the school or to the students, the community you're a part of. And so compassion goes right along with it. We'd like you to develop compassion. There are a lot of small opportunities you'll all get to, to learn how to cultivate this trait. You'll have a chance with your big job that you'll do when you're in this class twice a week. But you'll also have other little chances, like um, at, the, at the end of the day, you may sign up to help Younger students, preschool, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, help them pack up at the end of the day. Or the way the eighth graders at the beginning of the day help the smaller children um, carry their backpacks up the stairs and just say good morning. Do you know that saying good morning is helpful? Isn't it helpful to you when somebody smiles at you instead of goes like that? or doesn't even recognize that you're there, a smile goes a long way in helping people have a good day or encouraging them. Can you practice that? Everybody smile at me. Oh, I really helped. I love it. Thank you. You made my day. So, okay. Then, you know, the, the, the last thing, the last point I want to make is by learning this here, we are also preparing you for a citizen in our society. It's called uh, civics, when you learn how a citizen who's in a free democratic society, the, uh, the uh, opportunity to be responsible and give back to the society that gives you opportunity and freedom. And so you're learning this um, to be able to go from here and pick up that idea that whatever community I belong to, I have a responsibility to give back to it. If it's helping me, if it's teaching me, if it's giving me opportunities, if it's providing me um, a way to grow, then I have a responsibility to put in a little bit and help out in any way that I can. So, that's, um, that's another one of the main reasons for the leadership.